so talking about cloud computing a little more um now i've seen, you know due to the popularity of google and what you know whatever else and amazon as well i'm starting to see the big names come microsoft's coming sun is obviously courting you know startups and stuff too to use their their platform also um your thoughts on big names coming in like that well one of the biggest issues that i see when you start talking about larger companies wanting to start getting into the cloud computing now like i said there's all these companies who are starting to provide these services, but the companies who want to use them, the company I work for has a lot of sensitive data, and that's one of the big issues. It's like you start talking about cloud computing, your data is somewhere else. You know, it's out of your data center, and that is a really big issue for a lot of companies because, you know, how do you secure some of that? Now you're you're having to, you know, extend that trust out to a Google, a Yahoo, or Amazon, and that's really a big issue. Well, as a system administrator, that part makes me nervous, not only because you know, Amazon's got your data, and even if you read their EULAs and everything else, and they say they're not going to get, you know, give it out, or, but you're trusting someone else's system administrator with their own policies that you don't get to see because that's internal, and they may be great, but their company policies may not be as strict as your own, and so you don't know what they're doing to protect and patch their servers and patch their applications. So that part, as you know, an SA makes me really nervous. That's because scary. Yeah, you got financials out there, you got health information out there too. Uh, that's creepy. The health, the health type information is really nasty because I've had to do some stuff um, related to the health, health industry and you've got like the uh, HIPAA regulations. Right. Sure. I mean you have to go get HIPAA certification to even touch a machine that has health data on it even if you can't get to the data. Right. And for the health industry I'm not sure how they would even do that with the number of people that are... Well you've got that other problem with uh, cloud computing too is that everybody there was a, what was it, a network world that said IT is dead, everyone's going off-site or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know, no one's going to be hiring IT staff anymore. Well, so whoever's doing cloud computing still will obviously need IT staff, and you'll still need it for the desktop because users need support, but you've got to have a pipe big enough for that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's running their Word documents and their PowerPoint, and then they're also streaming their music to their desktop, and you know, they're writing all this stuff. You've still got to have a big enough pipe. And I work, my day job is at a college, and we easily use up our pipe, you know, students right. and everything else. And I don't know how we could possibly offload our applications and get any work done. See, that's another thing I was going to ask you is like, you know, there's this argument about who, who cares about the operating system anymore. Who, who cares, you know, um, because everything's web based now. You have, you know, whatever Google Docs, you have uh, Acrobat.com now, you know, all kinds of that sort of office type applications, applications in general going to the web. Why should anyone, does the operating system even matter anymore? Well, I got really slammed this week here at Linux World because I try to keep everything off site. I use Google Docs, I use, you know, Gmail, yeah, I use yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Wi Fi at Linux World was terrible. You couldn't stay connected, it kept dropping me. I was trying to use Cover It Live to do live blogging and I couldn't because it kept dropping my connection. So, install fest. What is this? I, I, I keep hearing that. Is, it, is that what they called it at Linux World? Yes. Yeah, it's a. It's a community project. It was, it, this was a very cool project. It's uh, run by, oh, I've got to get his names right. James, James Burgett. Bur James Burgett of the uh, Alameda County Community Resource Center. Um, what they do is they take donations of older hardware that people are trying to get rid of, right. and then they try to cobble together machines that have, like, I think the minimum was like a P3, 1 gigahertz, like minimum 256 mega RAM. And so the machines they can use, they go through and they'll install like a version of Ubuntu or Zubuntu, Edge Ubuntu. And then what they do is they turn around and they donate these to like the different school districts that maybe can't afford computers or um, people who are disabled. You know, maybe they're, maybe they live just on a disability pay, they can't afford this stuff, but trying to get them, get those people, you know, some kind of computing power. And even though it's a lower end machine, when you put the like the Ubuntu or Zubuntu one of those, you actually still have a pretty good usable desktop. Oh gosh, some of those were screaming. Oh, so once what, you get them installed. Where are the sexy machines though? Why is it Linux always gets the leftover? We found some sexy machines. Yeah, Zareason yeah. had some really hot laptops, and even PCs are usually not as pretty as Macs. You know, Apple yeah. makes their sexy little devices, and yeah. you know, I went and holy cow, bought an iPod Touch because it was so sexy, it you is, know? It is. I lost one on a plane. It was so pretty. Yeah. Oh, I miss it. Yeah. Drove all over town trying to find one when they came out, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but usually PC hardware isn't pretty, and even Dell, it's not pretty. And if you try to customize it, put some skins on it or something, it's still, it's not pretty. And Zareason is a company that's making desktops and laptops and 
putting stuff on their EPCs just for working with Linux. Oh, wow. So they're customized. The hardware is all going to work, and it's going to work well. Yeah, yeah. And they had some pretty shiny ones with white and shiny black ones and etched designs. And oh, wow. What was your favorite part? Oh, they had an Ubuntu key instead of that awful Windows key. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So is everything working you know, in the the Linux experience now, like Adobe, uh, like Flash plugins and, and Silverlight plugins, you know, for rich sort of websites now. If I'm, you know, there used to be like some things that were lacking, and it seems like some web, web applications, things like that, seemed to like either didn't support Linux or just weren't working very good. Flash is a lot easier to get working yeah. now, but it's still proprietary. Flash has problems on its own, right, yeah. in every operating system, so it's not as hard to get working in. Linux as it used to be, it's pretty much, if you've got a package management, you can just tell it to install it and away it goes. So, The, the main thing that was nice to see over the last year or so is they've actually got the versions for Linux matched up with the same version levels that come out for Windows. So they're coming out at the same time. Before it was like, you know, you had version 8 of Flash for yeah. Windows and then it was 6 point something over here under Linux. A lot of stuff wouldn't run. It was Ad old and crappy. Right. Adobe's finally got off up their backside here and at least got them matched up, which I'm still not a big Flash fan, but sometimes you, you need the stuff out there. And then there's the open source Nash, G-N-A-S-H. And what they're doing, it's an open source implementation of Flash wow. for Linux. Wow. I haven't tried that. I've seen a couple of people having the machines and for playing like YouTube videos and stuff, it seemed to work just fine. Right. I think there's a, a .NET open source platform too that someone's like creating, they're recreating the whole thing. But uh, for, for Linux, yeah, the Mono project, that's mono. it. Okay. The thing about Mono that I've kind of wanted to stay away from is I've seen questions about, they're, they're saying that it seems like Microsoft's kind of leave them, leaving them alone, but the way the licensing is, it sounds like if, micro, if it started to take off, was doing big, that Microsoft at any time, because license could come down and shut them down. And besides, it's, it's Microsoft, I don't want to. <laughs> but have, you, have you guys heard that Microsoft is now like they're trying to, I, I'm being devil's advocate here. <laughs> um, you know, they're trying to get more, co you know, cozying up. I was reading an e-week this, you know, this week um, with the open source community. Yeah, I think they just joined the Apache Foundation or something like yeah. that. Thoughts on they're that? They're starting to get scared a little bit. I mean, they spent all this time on Vista. Right. Vista came out. Right. Okay, that's about all it did. It came out. Right. Um, it was not the big splash, did not take off like they thought it would. Right. You know, they wanted to have that come out. They've always, they already wanted to be pushing all the NT, the XP and all that. And then the community is out there saying, hey, you can't stop supporting XP yet. We don't want to go to Vista. And this is one of the, well, I shouldn't say it's the first time. We all remember Microsoft Bob, but, <laughs> but it was a major version of Windows that really, I mean, even though there's still a lot of people using it, it was a flop compared to what they thought it was going to do. And at that same time, you started seeing you know, some other versions of like the GOS they had on the Microsoft, those lower end PCs where people are starting to buy those. And you're starting to get Linux in front of people. You're starting to see, you know, Dell's doing more with the Ubuntu. And I think that some of this, they're just starting to see the pressure. Well, people, that's, that's the same thing as people throwing a fit about the um, Apple App Store that's for the iPhone and the right. iPods, is that it's so restrictive that even though you can develop an app, if it doesn't follow their rules, it's not going on there. And not even rules to keep the platform secure, just they want control. And any time you can say, well, it's open because you can build stuff for it, it's not fully open until you've released all the information. And it's you can still make a company and make a living and make a profit and have pieces of things open because the more open it is, the more you can see where things fail, the more people can contribute to it and make it better. And the better it is, the more people can use it.